Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Jason and today we're going to download and install Proxmox next on Low Res DIY. So what is Proxmox? Well, on their page, Proxmox Virtual Environment. Proxmox VE is an open source serving management platform for your enterprise virtualization. So what's that mean? It allows you to take a computer, whatever computer you install this on, uh, and create what they call virtual machines. It allows you to take the resources available on that machine, chop them up, and make three or four different machines on that one physical piece of hardware. Now, why would you want to do something like that? Well, in corporations, if you have, let's say you have 20 employees and each one of them needs a computer. You go out, you look at them. All right, it's going to cost me $2,000 to get everyone or a system per person. So you're at $40,000. Or I can go out and buy a few servers, spend, say, $10,000, create 20 virtual machines on them, and give each person a thin client and give them access to those virtual machines. Well, all of a sudden you just took your, your 40,000, put it down to 10,000, you saved quite a bit of money. In my case, I'm going to make a couple virtual machines for different things like a Pi Hole, which is a whole, whole home ad blocker for the internet and Home Assistant, which is my uh, what I run my smart home in. The reason I'm putting them in two different machines is if one of them will get corrupted for some reason, it should not affect the other one. Whereas if I just took everything and put them on this one desktop, if some oddball thing happened, it could take Pi Hole down, Proxmox down, any other applications I have running on here. And I may or may not be able to figure out what caused that. Whereas if I have them separated out and there's only really one application running on that virtual machine, I should be able to solve the problem and fix it. And if I'm not able to, I could just delete that virtual machine, create another one, reinstall everything and start over, which is much easier if you're only doing it with one application, not the entire machine that you're, you're relying on. Okay, with all that said, let's uh, switch over to the desktop and download Proxmox. I'll have links in the description uh, that you can follow to get to these pages easily. You're going to want to either download the Proxmox VE 6.3 ISO or 6.2 ISO. I have already started the 6.3 downloading just because it's the latest and the greatest. I still have another 40 some minutes to wait because internet service in my area is crap. Another thing you're going to want to do is download a program like Belina Etcher. And what this guy will do, I've already downloaded it by the way, but, but what this guy will do is it will take your ISO image and put it on a, an e, uh, USB drive and make it a bootable drive. So that when your system starts up, you can tell it to boot from the USB drive and it will start the installation process for whichever ISO you're wanting to install on that machine. Be it uh, Windows or in our case Proxmox or Ubuntu or anything like that. Once everything is completed downloading, you're going to want to go into Windows Explorer. Navigate to your downloads directory and you'll see Belina Etcher and Proxmox. Double click on Belina Etcher and while it's starting up, take your USB drive and insert it into one of the USB ports on your desktop. Of course, it's going to open up in Windows Explorer, so you can just close that down. Etcher will ask you first for the file that you want to flash, which is your Proxmox VE 6.3. Then it'll ask for the target drive, which is the USB drive that you just inserted into the machine. And it'll ask you to flash it. Yes, you want to flash it.
once it's completed the flash process, Windows is going to think it's a, a new disk that needs formatted, which you don't want to do. So just cancel out of that. Close all these windows. And Etcher is going to ask if you want to flash another one, which we don't. So you can just close everything down. Then you'll take your newly flashed USB drive and you'll insert it into a port on the machine that you want to install Proxmox on. So with our bootable media created and ready to install on our server, there's one last thing we want to consider, and that's where exactly do you want to install it? Do you want to install it on the hard drive on your system, or if there's multiple hard drives on one of those? Myself, I'm going to take a pair of these SanDisk USB drives and create a uh, ZFS pool uh, RAID 1. That way I have some redundancy with the, the boot media. So you'll see that as we uh, install Proxmox. So I'm just gonna take these USB drives and insert them in the front ports. And one of the reasons I chose these guys is because they're, they're super small and they'll be very out of the way. Not that anyone's going to be up here fooling around, but it'd be a shame if someone would hit it and just snap it off and break it. So I've already booted the machine up. Once it hit the, the Dell splash screen, I hit the F11 key to get to the uh, boot options. And we're going to want to go down to hard drives because again, the USB drives are under hard drives for some reason. And I put the bootable drive in, uh, in one of the back USB ports. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to hit enter. Proxmox will pop up and the option we want to choose is install Proxmox VE. Hit enter. The, the, process will start it'll do a quick search through the machine to see what hardware is available and then eventually it'll get to uh to a user agreement and and then we'll actually start uh setting the system up and here is the user agreement feel free to read it at your leisure Otherwise, just click on the agree button. Here is the first choice you have to make, and that is the target hard drive where you want it installed. Like I said, I want to create a ZFS pool, RAID 1, which is basically a mirror, and I want to use the two USB drives that are inserted in the front ports. So I'll click on the hard drives from the... Uh, the hard drive option that's there and I'll pick do not use that way it forces it into using those two USB drives click OK next we live in the uh, US or I live in the US and specifically in the Chicago time zone keyboard layout is US English click next give it a password And I would suggest going ahead and filling in an email address because if there's any errors to the system or problems, it will send you an email and, and make you aware of the situation. Click next. Top choice is what uh, Nick do you wanna, wanna use? This system has four, so I'm gonna pick the first a network access card. The next thing is your host name. If you can just leave that the way it is if you want and it'll just once we get into the to the web GUI it'll just be the server will just be named PBE but I'm going to change it to low res.local and the next choice is your static IP address that you want to use. I'm going to pick 50 my gateway is the 1.1 and the DNS server of 41 is just fine. Click next. 
your last option is uh, or your last uh, step you need to take is just double check everything that you just set up make sure it's the way you want it and if it is go ahead and click install okay once the installation is complete the system will reboot and you'll end up on this greetings logon screen uh, the important information you want to take from this is right here https colon slash slash 192 yada 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 your ip address and port 8006 you'll use that to log into the web gui so bring up whatever web browser you're comfortable with myself i'm going to use chrome and type that address and you can see i've already typed it in a few times Ah, didn't work so https colon slash slash ip address of your new proxmox server followed by the port 8006 hit enter it's going to come up with a warning screen because the the uh web page has a self-signed certificate so we just want to go ahead and bypass that by hitting advanced and proceed on and here we have our logon screen for the web GUI. Your username, if this isn't filled in, is root, and your password is the one you created when we uh, did the initial install. Click log on. You're gonna get a splash screen because we're utilizing the free version. There is a subscription version that adds some tech support and some other things like that, but we're just gonna use the, the uh, free version. Click OK, and here we have it. Here's Proxmox. Over here, you can see our server, low res. The, the first thing I always do after creating one of these and getting logged into the web GUI is you click on your server, go down to updates. You want to hit refresh. And uh, again, it's going to give you the nag, the warning screen. You click OK, and it's going to go out to the web to the repositories. And find any updates that pertain to your system. Eventually it's gonna crash out again because we don't have the subscription. So there's that's something else you can get is a few more update repositories if you wanna uh, eventually subscribe to them. So we'll let this finish out. Okay, and there, there it is, did the, the air out right there at the bottom. So we'll click on X. And to install those updates, we'll click on upgrade. It'll bring up a command line window and you'll choose yes and enter. Then it'll run through the process of updating everything. Okay, well, we're gonna just let that run. Once it gets completed, we will have a fully up-to-date functional Proxmox server. The next step would be designating some uh, storage space for uh, ISO downloads and some storage space to be utilized for by the VMs and then creating a few VMs, but that's for the next video. So until then, hit that subscribe button, like it if you liked it, and thanks for watching.